I'm tying my favorite nymph now. You know, all us fishermen all have favorite flies. And when I was a kid, I always knew what fly was going to work the best. My buddies would all ask me, what fly is going to work good today? And I'd say, a oh, mosquito or an atoms, whatever's going to work. Guess what we caught our fish on? We all put an atoms on, that's what we caught our fish on. So I didn't know what was going to work, I had no idea. But what I thought would work, we all, they all follow me, and that's what we caught our fish on. I'm going to tie the March Brown Nymph. It's my favorite all-around fly, and the reason I said what I said previous is this is the fly I use all the time. So this is the fly I catch most of my fish on, so that's what I use. I'm going to use a new Dairiki number um, 285 hook, which is a nymph hook, and it's got a nice nymph shape to it. It's a nice hook, and John Bailey and I got together, and, and he de I designed the hook with him, and we worked together, and we got this new hook out, and I'm very happy with it. It's about a 2X long. I'm going to weight it. I like to weight my flies. I don't like to use split shot, but I will use split shot if I have to to get down, no question. But I'd rather not. So I weight all my flies fairly well with either lead or lead substitute of some sort, but some kind of wire to get it some weight. I'm going to use a 3 aught thread, and this is going to be a new uh, uni thread. I'm going to put that on here in, in sort of a rusty brown color. Bring in Notice I put my lead on first, and then I run the thread through the lead to anchor the lead to the shank. Most fly books will tell you when you start a fly, you put a, a layer of thread first, which is a good idea. But I do it this way. It's faster, and then that body cemented. Now I'm going to put three tails on. This is a typical March brown. I designed this fly in 1970, and about two years ago, I added, changed it slightly, uh, my pattern. But... I'm going to put a little wax on my fingers and just a very, very light little dubbing here. And this is a very tan Australian opossum dubbing. I put a little dubbing on first, right where I'm going to put the tail. And the reason is you never want to tie a tail right to a steel shank hook. If you do that, it'll break off immediately. So I tie my tail. I'm going to use three pheasant fibers for the tail. And I like the pheasant. And again, this is my own pattern. It's similar to uh, Preston Jennings and... Art Flick and a few others, but I come up with it on my own for the Esopus River in New York State about 1970. And I've used this fly ever since out west all these last 35 years. Uh, and I changed it about two years ago and added with some new materials, I added something to the fly. And with the tail, just break it off. Now I got three tails, looks just like the actual March Brown Stenonyma vercarium little fly, mayfly that comes off up on the Esopus River in New York State. And of course, there isn't really, there's a Western March Brown, but there really isn't a lot of March Browns right around here. I think they take it for a stonefly nymph in the West here. So pretty much they take it, and that's the key. And we're going to use some new materials that I've just started using. Very interesting. We're going to use a vinyl rib, which is sort of flat on one side and rounded on the other. We're going to use a rusty or a brown color. I'm going to take the, uh, this looks like the brown one. And it's got a flat side and a rounded side, all right? Convex side. And we're going to tie it in on one side of the shank with the flat side toward the shank. Whoop. Just like that. And that's going to give me a little wider body because this is a flat clinger nymph and a very flat body. I could do a little strip on the other side, too, to make it even flatter or wider. But one is enough for the March Brown. Take my pliers. And I flatten it out a little bit and some more cement. You'll find I use a lot of cement tying the fly, I believe in it. Okay. Now with that, we're going to put just a little bit of wax on the thread. This is a pre-wax thread. I said it was uni. It's not. It's a wopsy thread, but it's a very nice thread. And it's really 140 denier. It's not, a, I call it a 3 aught, which is the old term, but 140 denier, which makes it about a 3 aught if you want to use the aught sign on thread, which most of us old guys are used to talking aughts. The problem with aught, it's not accurate. I can have a three aught thread and a six aught thread and it's the same size. So we, they've proved that it's not accurate. But we're going to dub this on with a little bit of wax so we got a nice tight body. Now when we build this body with this tan dubbing, we're going to start behind it once, behind the ribbing, then we're going to come up and what we're going to do is not lay it on nice and thick. I'm just going to spiral this dubbing on not missing anything, but very slightly. I don't want a very heavy fly, and I want to bring that dubbing up a little bit over halfway up the body. Put a little more on. I tie a lot of these flies. I was tying them last night. And I, there we go. 
Now we're going to rib this, and here's a trick. Either way you, you could do it is okay. But I'm going to bend this V-rib a little bit, this vinyl rib. I'm going to bend this so the flat side is out, the rounded side is in. It's a little hard to do. I've got it here, and I'm going to bend it around this way so I bring the round side down into the material and the flat side up. That makes it appear like it's thicker. So we use that all the time. So it's a little thicker ribbing. And this one, you want this nice and segmented look to this fly. And I want to go up at least halfway up the shank, if not just a little bit past halfway. That's just about perfect. And then wind it around. Tie it in. Three wraps. Helen Shaw just passed away uh, uh, April the 10th, or excuse me, December 10th. And... Um, she was in her 90s, and she was probably one of the finest fly tires in the world, and I had the pleasure of tying and having her watching me tie in 1968, a long time ago. But we kept friendship over these years. All right, there's your little March Brown body, and I've got the abdomen done, three tails. So far, it looks like it's a real winner. It's a fish catcher. I like those tails just perfect, but once you cast it out in the water, it's not. Now we're going to put a wing case on. For the wing case, I use several things. But again, another new material I just discovered. It's called body stretch or scud back. There's two names for the same stuff. And then again, that's sort of a, a, a tan color. Uh, I think they call it, what do they call it here? A brown. This one's brown, they, other colors. But we're going to put that right on top. And I really like this material. It makes a good looking fly, especially on a nymph right on top, right where I want my wing case to start, and then let it hang. That's the start of my wing case right there, nice and tight. Then on top of that, we're going to use typical March Brown Nymph. You always use turkey. So we're going to use typical turkey tail, dark brown, and we're going to let a little strip of turkey on that. Just gives a little more, a little more definition when you go to tie it in. Now we got our turkey. This is all for the wing case. Good. And at this point now, I'm going to tie in my legs. And there's several things we can use for legs, but what I've been using lately is kind of fun, is a hen pheasant. And pheasant sometimes is difficult to work with because the, the sizes of the actual feathers vary from right to left. But partridge is what I normally use, but I also like this hen pheasant. It's a little darker. It's got uh, easy to get, plenty of hen pheasants around but it's got a nice little, I'll pull one feather out for you. And this is around the shoulder of the bird. There's a nice little feather. And I tie mine in upside down and make the legs just about right. I didn't invent this. I saw a young fly tire do it probably 39 years ago and I've been tying this way ever since. So I didn't invent it, but clean off the flue so you have a nice stem and a nice feather. And you, you try to pick one that'll have the nice legs on it, not too long and not too short. Now I'm going to take this feather and I'm going to stroke it backwards just for enough material to give me what I think I need in legs. And we're going to tie it in upside down exactly on top of the turkey and the scud back or body stretch right there. That's my wing case starting right there. Now I'm going to clip this off, not real tight, leave a little bit and I'm going to put a little cement on it. I leave a little piece out there. And when I tie it in, you're not going to be able to pull that leg apart. So that looks pretty good. Next thing I want to do is go back to my dubbing. Now, the thorax on a March Brown Nymph is a little fuller. And this is a clinger fly, so I'm going to flatten this fly even more. This fly is found right on the stones on the bottom of the stream, and it clings. So it's a clinger, not really a crawler as much as some of like our stone flies. So we're going to put a nice dubbing, and we want this dubbing to be a little bit heavier at this point. A little heavier dubbing at this point than the abdomen was. This is the thorax, the throat area. This is the area where the gills are, where they breathe, and where the legs come out. So we're going to work on this and make a pretty good dub. We're going to a little heavier right on down, not quite to the eye of the hook. Leave a little room on that because you want to put a head on this fly. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to bring over the legs first, and because we put them upside down, when we bring them over, they're going to be right side up, and they're going to be perfect right on top. Again, partridge, speckled partridge is just perfect for this fly, or I've been playing around with this little 
hen pheasant. Then we're going to bring the turkey right up the center. Tie that in right up there in the eye. Right in, we're going to tie that in. This is a nice uh, 2X long and 2 extra stout hook. This is a good hook, this old Dairiki. And I clean that off, we're going to cut it off. Now notice, one thing left. i got to bring my body stretch over, and I stretch it slightly. This is a plastic-type material. I wouldn't say with rubber, it's plastic. Bring it over and stretch it slightly and tie it in right to the eye. Now that fly could be finished. That fly would work, nothing wrong with it. But I'm going to add something to the fly. I'm going to put a head on that fly because a March Brown nymph, like our stoneflies, has a pretty good size head. So I want to mimic that head and make it look just about perfect. So this looks like that stonefly, or really March Brown nymph. But it's on the bottom, and they, I think they take it for a small golden stone. I have no doubt about that. So we make a nice dubbing. Now what I'm going to do is bring that dubbing real close to the eye, and we're going to form a perfect little head of dubbing and then bring it back, one turn of thread. Now we're gonna bring the scud back, back over the top again, lay it in there, just so we have a nice looking head. Maybe two wraps, Helen Shaw said three wraps. Now I'm gonna whip finish it, and I'll do it slow again. I bring it over and lay my bobbin up. Gonna tuck that underneath, put my thumb in, and I actually do this after 40 years or 41 years, I actually do it faster than I need to, but I'm gonna try to slow up. Put it in there like that. I did a perfect whip without grabbing the tool. Nothing wrong with a whip finish tool. Most all the tires use one anymore, and they work great. But I've learned to use one without, before the tool was invented, and I prefer it this way. This looks pretty good to me. So far, I'm real happy with this fly. I'm going to squash the head down a little bit, not enough to break anything. Just down and over on the back. <clears throat> Sorry. And then we brushed out the hair and the dubbing underneath to represent the gills. So that's the area there that's going to have a lot of life to it. Clean it all up. And the last thing we do on this fly is put a little cement right on the top. You could use a little epoxy if you want, but just a little cement to kind of brighten it up. And that's the finished... March Brown Nymph that I use all the time wherever I go. That's my go-to fly. The first nymph I put on is that nymph. If that doesn't catch him, then, I, then I'm not sure what's going to catch him. But that will do it for me. So that's the fly.